Welcome back to Southeastern 14, edition number two of Bets and Ball Games with Edwards and Greason. And before we get started, we're always looking for new advertisers and sponsors here at Southeastern 14. So reach out to caroline.smith at southeastern14.com. Again, that's Caroline, C A R O L. I-N-E dot Smith at southeastern14.com if you are interested. And we welcome in Mr. Greason joining us from Chattanooga. What's up, brother? Not much. And the way you struggle with spelling Caroline right there, there is a Pakistani kid somewhere waiting to get you in the script spelling bee who is like a 17-word favorite. Oh, well, come on now. I was a spelling bee finalist. I was a spelling bee finalist in like fourth. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes, you were. In, I think in, I had, that, in that homeschool league. Right. I think I, <laughs> I, I think I had a trophy for that, maybe. All right. Um let's see. Um all right, before we get like into this week's card, uh let's just point out uh, you know, maybe some takeaways. From last week, my biggest takeaway is that I don't wish on my worst enemy having to watch Billy Napier call plays and getting double digitized against Kentucky for the fourth loss in six years, not double digits style, but back to back double digitizations from BBN and the Cats, a team that I once enjoyed a 31 year winning streak against and then before lunch the next day get absolutely blown out by the Jagoffs and watch Arthur Smith call plays. I can just tell you it's a painful experience and it was a bad weekend. Um now you on the other hand your alma mater lost a heartbreaker but which we don't do moral victories at the swamp or Jordan Hare but I mean I, I'm sure you had to be pleased with a lot of things but I'm sure in the fourth quarter you were not and how about Carson Beck force feeding Bowers in crunch time. I mean, I just love that from him. And so, but why, why does Georgia yours. not start with that? Why does Georgia not? The, yeah. the whiteboard in the Georgia coaches' offensive room should say goal number one, number 19 touches the ball on every drive. Goal number two, it's like Fight Club. Goal number two, number 19 touches the ball on every drive. And, and I appreciate, and my heart goes out, knowing how big of a Gators fan you are and how big of a Falcons fan you are. But the frustration with the play calling is a, is a lament to the heavens. The painfulness of watching Auburn quarterback play and Desmond Ritter quarterback play at this juncture for my two favorite teams on the weekend makes you change the channel. I mean, so – we're in the same boat. And before we get too neck deep into our picks and our reviews and whatever else, my wife watched our debut uh, Bets and Ball Games podcast last week. And she has now asked me to apologize because she thinks I'm a freckleist. And I was, uh, I was discriminatory against people with freckles last week because I made a Dennis Johnson joke, which makes me think of the great rant that Uncle Buck had when he sits down with Maisie's principal and she's got that huge knot on her face and he goes, Oh, you know me, old buck melanoma. Boy, <laughs> <laughs> so, if, if I defended anyone with freckles, my wife is a far better person than me. And she's in tune with such a uh, uh, societal uh, uh, grievances. So yes, uh, I'm, you, I guess you've got your Twitter Handle right there. We're going to put Jay Greason, bona fide frecklist. And, and by the way, and you jinxed Spencer Rattler for me. You didn't have that game. I had South Carolina because he had been playing spectacular. Uh, and then he throws that pick six before halftime. Oh, boy. Um, and one thing about – why? yeah, everything you just said about coaching and getting your stud hoss involved every possession early and often. Uh, Arthur Smith, maybe you should subscribe to Southeastern 14. Bets and ball games, you know, maybe get Kyle Pitts a touch every single possession, you moron. Okay. Oh, and by the way, I, I fact check. Not that I doubted your your fact on the Auburn. It just sounded just so. There was no way that five five power five foes in, in a row, um, not a hundred yards passing. And I fact well, checked you. And it's actually 
94 yards or less. And now it's how many games? Six, I believe. Six six games of 94 yards passing or fewer by Auburn's aerial not, non-attack, I guess. I'm waiting for Hugh Freeze to go to the podium and say, breaking news, I've hired 87-year-old Barry Switzer, and we're going to run the wishbone. <laughs> I'm with you. All right, let's get going on some SEC games. And I might be going out of order here because I'm not positive on the kick. Actually, I know Missouri and LSU. Uh, I know that that one is that's a, a noon. noon. Yep, that's a noon Eastern. So that's 11 a.m. Uh, Mizzou time. Maybe might, might have some students that have never been 5-0 and pulling all-nighters. All right, I made LSU – uh, six in this game. So yesterday when it was at six, I was hoping it would trickle up to six and a half, maybe seven. Maybe I even think about buying the half point uh, to the key number of seven. But instead it came down. And actually now I'm seeing that Circa and South Point are at four and a half. And it looks like the total, um, which I think we're both on the over. I got it 64 and a half. Looks like it's 65 now. At a lot of books and 65 and a half at the uh, Westgate Superbook. So I was considering going Missouri if it, you know, if I could get a seven because they are good at, as a home dog under Drinkwitz as they are uh, six and two against the spread with five outright wins. But at four and a half, five, uh, I, the side's a pass for me. Uh, I'll explain why I like the over here in a sec. I'm sure it'll be many of the same reasons you like it, but uh, just your, and before I give you the floor, I, I also want to say the West is still wide open. Okay. LSU can still beat any team in the country on any given night. They can still win the West and Ole Miss can still win the West. Al- Alabama can lose at A&M and still win the West. Cause A&M still got three brutal, road games in which I think they'll probably be underdogs in looming. So anyway, uh, your thoughts, LSU at undefeated Missouri. Well, you had this on Twitter. I think I saw LSU's over is five and zero this year, right? Correct. Uh, Missouri scoring North of 30 and allowing more than 25 against FBS schools. The average score in FBS games for LSU Buckle up for this one, brother. It's 37.3 to 36 is the that- average score of LSU games against fellow Power 5 opponents – or not Power – FBS opponents. FBS opponents. You just took the Grambling game out. Okay. Yes. If you count the Grambling game, their uh, scores are averaging 75.0 points per game combined. And, all right, so now I heckled my uh, one of my LSU buddies – that I said Jaden Daniels is going to be the best college quarterback to ever play in a Music City Bowl. And I did not mean it as a compliment. But, I mean, that defense is just atrocious. Now, the the terrible diagnosis of the LSU safety, who word came out that he's got brain cancer, is that a galvanizing factor? I don't know. But the other part of this, not only are they at home, not only is this easily the Biggest game in Eli Drinkowitz's young career. He's got a he's got Brady Cook at quarterback, who's got an eleven bagel touchdown interception ratio, and is now past Andre Woodson as the all time SEC leader of most consecutive throws without a pick. Whoa! By the way, I picked uh, my at the Vegas Insider Seminar in o- August of seven. I picked. Kentucky to beat LSU in my SEC upset of the year, and boy, did they ever do that! You remember that game? Uh, that was that was the the bluegrass miracle, right? And they they no no no, no that's the other way around, right? Yeah, it was an yeah. overtime game uh, that when they beat that was Guy Morris on the bluegrass miracle. This was uh, oh the old Oregon Cup Brooks Rich Brooks. The uh, but no, I I, I don't. I have had a whole lot of luck in my day's plays afternoon email through the Times Free Press that isolating games that there's really only one side to play. 
you're not going to hit better than 60%. The best guys on the planet barely hit better than 60%. Billy Walters barely gets to 60%. And now, of course, he's made $10 gabillion with it. But you've just got to find the place. The only play in this game is over the number. Is that guaranteed it's going to hit? No. But the only play that makes sense, numerically, I test all of it, is, is over the 64, 65, wherever you get it. And as soon as you hear our podcast, you need to go find it because it's only going to keep going north. Yep. Yeah, I mean, here we are early Thursday afternoon, and we're starting to, to see uh, the movement. And it, and it opened at 62 and a half on Sunday. Just a, a few more stats to add, but Jay nailed it with all that analysis right there. Just to come by, So over 5 and 0 for LSU, combined score 69, 82, 65, 104. They did have one, uh, the 55. Um, that got below. But the only reason that, that got below is because they were just killing Mississippi State in Starkville and, and just, you know, took the foot off the, uh, the accelerator. Uh, like you said with cook um, and he's 74.5 completion percentage, also three rushing TDs uh, in addition to the 11 to zero TD INT Luther burden. I mean, former five-star true sophomore breakout year, first team all American. If the season ended today, we know what Jaden Daniels is doing, Malik neighbors, etc. We know LSU's defense stinks uh to put it mildly all right so we both like the over so let's uh move on and let's go i know it's a four eastern kick let's go vandy at florida just because i want to hear your opinion on billy napier and so i've got some stats on him as well uh nine and nine uh straight up at florida six of the nine l's by double digits, only uh, five of the W's against uh, Power Five opponents as a home favorite, two and six against the spread. And by the way, uh, Florida is at last look 18 or 18 and a half. And uh, I'll get that here in a second um, when I give the floor uh, to Jay. But going back to his days at UL Lafayette, Napier five and 13 against the spread last 18. As a home favorite, now Vandy is 0-6 against the spread this year. They have lost four in a row, but they would have covered if, if 18 was the number against both Kentucky and Mizzou. Granted, those were both uh, at home, but Kentucky and Mizzou are both better than Florida. And last thing, um, Clark – oh, wait, let me add this. Actually, one more thing. So only three wins by double digits for Napier – at Florida over power five foes, but only one win by 19 or more, which is relevant with the line here. That was the 38 to six win against South Carolina last year. And Clark Lee is a road underdog seven and four uh, ATS. So what you think about Billy Napier in general? And then um, do you think our boosters are going to come up with 32 milli, which we got to pay him after this season, after just ponying up 85 ish milli for the new football only facility. And we're about to do some major, major renovations on the swamp. Your thoughts. Well, here are a couple, three things that nobody really had to deal with before. And I'm not, this is not just a Napier or Florida problem. This is the new landscape of college football. If for the longest time, for most of our lifetime, Brian, you and I are close to the same age. I'm a little older than you. It would oh, be, happy belated. Happy belated. I saw that. Thank you much. Yeah. Thank you much. If, if, if Auburn was tail spinning, if Florida was tail spinning, if Georgia was tail spinning, not only they could, the question was not, can we afford the buyout? The question was, we can't afford to be mediocre and not get the donations, not get the local businesses. What is the biggest industry in all of those towns, which are the eight Saturday home games every year and the merchandise and all the stuff that goes with it. But now you have to ask your question in the age of NIL, are we going to spend money to pay somebody not to coach as opposed to help 
fundraise the NIL arm to get the dudes here who might could help, said coach. And I mean, and I wrote this earlier this week in the 5 and 10, which is my morning column at timesfreepress.com every Monday through Friday. Napier's roller coaster over the last two weeks is head spinning. He was at a zenith after beating Tennessee. Everybody was going, oh, okay, hey, maybe he's getting his feet underneath him. Hey, we got five stars coming next year for the first time in, in eight years. Hey, and then Kentucky came in there and punched everybody in the face. And I don't, I, I don't have any more answers about Billy Napier than I don't even think Billy Napier has. We asked last week if Kiffin was good at this. I don't even know if Napier's mediocre at this. And I mean that in both directions. He's either terrible or has a chance to be really good. But right now, if you pressed me, I'd have to say he's bad. It, it'll be interesting to see because, um, you, you know, as you talk about can we afford to be mediocre, I'm interested to see how many uh, empty seats there are, you know, tomorrow. Ooh, um, hey, let this game be 13-10 one way or the other at halftime. And – there ain't going to be a whole lot of people there singing Tom Petty to start the fourth quarter. Yeah, we we would – ten years ago we'd say they'd be at the pur- Purple Porpoise, but the Purple Porpoise is no moss. Oh, and what we, is the we, purpose – Brian, what is the purpose of the Purple Porpoise? Drink beers. Okay. <laughs> so, so, and we also pointed out – or I, I think you were talking about all the goodwill Napier had earned, and I said, oh, that, that goodwill can end. And I think you said – by by Monday morning, I said, oh, by 4 o'clock Saturday. Uh-uh. Late first quarter. So whatever time that was. And also, at Kentucky, when Florida specifically in Lexington, only one Kentucky running back had ever run for more than 100 yards. That would be Mo Williams. And uh, uh, Ray Davis had more than 100 in the first quarter. He had more than 200 with like four minutes left till halftime. The uh, we talked to the first game about LSU about identifying sides, the only side that really makes the most sense. And I don't see any way Florida has given you any reason to lay that many points. I mean, I don't like this game. I'm not putting this game on my list. If we're going to pick five at the end of the day, five SEC games or how many ever we're going to do and be graded on, I, I loathe this game. Because Vandy's not good. Right. Vandy is not good. Yeah. And well, here, well, let me put it this way, though. So here's who Florida, okay, against Power 5 opponents, they score 11 at Utah, an explosion for 29 at home to Tennessee, and 14 at Kentucky. And then against a, a not very good group of five, and Charlotte's defense was atrocious last year. Obviously, it's a little better. Florida only had 22, and then the 49 against McNeese. Uh, 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 I don't even think McNeese is – I think they're kind of a lower-tier uh, FCS. Cecil the Diesel no longer uh, playing at McNeese. So I'm on Vandy plus 8.5 or I'm sorry, plus 18 um, or 18.5. And, and uh, so we just – we trash this scrub game and move on. And it looks like, uh, yeah, still 18, 18 and a half. And uh, the total is 52. I will point out that Vandy is 5-0-1 to the over, but I don't think anybody needs to be playing overs when the Gators are involved uh, these days. Okay, let's next go to Ole Miss at Arkansas and huge loss for the Razorbacks. Uh, well, just in general, three in a row losses, not looking good for my over six and a half win total and not looking good. Sam Pittman is all of a sudden under a uh, serious siege, and I really like Pittman, so I, I hate to see it. Uh, but now he is two and one straight up, three and oh against the spread against Kiffin. The only loss, they go for two in the last minute in that thriller in Oxford two years ago. Um Right now, we are looking at Ole Miss. Oh, gosh. I'm so sorry. Here we go. All right. We got 11 and a half for 12. Ooh, total has slipped. Well, there's a 63 at DraftKings, 63 and a half at most other spots. Um, 
You, oh, I, I wanted to say the freshman tight end for Arkansas, Luke Haas. He is broken clavicle. That's season ending, right? It's definitely out yeah. for a while. He had two touchdown catches uh, at LSU and was really starting to to look like um, their next uh, guy with the last name of Henry because they've had multiples. Uh, Rocket Sanders did come back, didn't get it going. Uh, Arkansas's O-line got dominated. Now we know Ole, uh, A&M's uh, defense is levels above um, Ole Miss's. Uh, so I, I think we could get KJ back to the form we saw against LSU's defense because last week we saw that LSU and Ole Miss have very similar uh, defenses. But a couple of injuries, John Morgan, uh, the transfer defensive end for Arkansas, um, came in from Pitt, 14 career sacks. He already had two sacks and a forced fumble for the Hogs. He's out. And then Dwight McGlother, third team All-SEC cover corner. I hadn't been ruled out yet, to my knowledge, but he got a concussion last week. I'm not expecting him to play. So those defensive issues for Arkansas bode well for an overplay, although it is a pretty high number. What do you think on this one? Well, it sounds like, because I saw it earlier in the week in that 64 range, uh, finding it underneath that magical 63 number, would be would behoove all of our our viewers slash listeners and players out there. Again, I I don't feel comfortable. I wouldn't feel comfortable in any Ole Miss game. Ole Miss and LSU are are almost guaranteed. Well, they're, they they've got to be. You got to first look at the over in every single one of their games. Defensively, they're really cute when they try to tackle other people. Offensively. <laughs> They are explosive and in, in ways that not only deliver chunk plays, but deliver touchdown plays. LSU had a half dozen three-play touchdown drives this year already. And when you can generate those kind of points in less than a minute, I, I, there's this, I love the over, and, and, may, and I may be the biggest K.J. Jefferson fan uh, outside of his mama, who they, who apparently CBS and the ESPN body of networks are contractually obligated to show her 72 times per Arkansas broadcast because she's going to have some sort of loud T-shirt on, and by golly, she's whoop, whoop, pig suey in the stands wherever KJ is playing. I love KJ, too, and uh, we're both on the same page. Like it over, they've played two shootouts the last two years, 42-27 last year for 69 uh, combined over uh, on a 7-1 and one run for Arkansas. And as Jay uh, just laid out, um, you know, bad defense, good offense. And I, yeah, I, I'll, I'll even – and what, what if Zachary Franklin gets going? Because pre-scoring, the, the tight end finally got going last week for Ole Miss. Trey Harris is back and healthy. That's Bad news for the rest of the SEC. And what I thought was, or not not surprising, but, but it was just surprising he didn't contribute much last year was the transfer running back from SMU, Ulysses uh, Bentley, who was really good at SMU, but got hurt early last year. By the time he got healthy again, the true freshman Quinshawn Judkins had established his, himself in the former five-star recruit Zach Evans, who's no longer there, ha was ahead of Bentley. So Bentley didn't really get any run last year uh, or, you know, touches. Basically, he only had 77 uh, rushing yards. Well, he comes up big last week, uh, 90 rushing yards on nine uh, carries and a touchdown. So that's just another weapon now uh, that they've uh, – that Kiffin has at his uh, disposal. So we're both and – Go ahead. You've got to look at uh, a whole lot of things when you're analyzing bets and ball games and how they overlap. There is no there the two coaches in the country. I am most comfortable backing overs on because even if they put their foot on the gas, they're going to let their second string dudes air it out and run their offense at the high levels. Lane, let me Kiffin guess. Let me, Lane, Kiffin, Lincoln, Riley, Bingo. Those are both of them. Yep. Those are both they, – they they are – while they didn't necessarily work for Spurrier, but in the glory days of the Swamp, Spurrier didn't care if it was his four-string dude. He's calling ball plays, and they're running it up and down the field. And so there was no way you would ever bet a Spurrier under. 
And Shane Matthews was his fifth stringer until he elevated him to the Una. Um, all right. Next game. Let's go. Oh, we got Auburn. So, oh, Alabama at A&M. Alabama at A&M. So this line, okay. Circa's down to pick them. Westgate Superbook down to pick them. Um, there are a couple of ones and one and a half still out there. The total 45 and a half. So I was on uh, VEASAN tonight, late last night. Um, uh, was like a, Is that a humble ten- brag? You, you like you like promo dropping right there? Well, no. no, no, no hum- well, just, I, it, just tell us about the litany of your national radio program. Was- <laughs> just go ahead well, and well, – well, well but, you know, I was but, dating Blake Lively before she ran into Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, was, I was dating Emily Ratajkowski. And then, oh, no, well, you know. Uh, yeah, 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 sure. Um, no, it, it was not attempted to be a brack. What it was attempted to be was to say what they said to me that took me off guard. And I did a Twitter search and didn't find anything. And I meant to uh, contact Pat Smith this morning. And I forgot. Um they said to me before we went on even on the air, Matt Human said, "Hey, did you hear Milro uh, hurt his hamstring at practice today?" I go, "Whoa, wait, what?" And then I went and I looked, and the line had gone down to one and a half and one at some books. I was like, "Whoa, is there something to this?" So you haven't heard that? And look, I don't no, mean to. I've not heard. Okay, that. totally irresponsible of me to be spreading unconfirmed. Uh, rumors, which I have not gotten. Any I have more. also not heard that Nick Saban's going into rehab. I mean, come right. on, dude. I mean, <laughs> what are we doing here? Well, the line's down to pick them. The line is moving. Down to pick them because all of the sharps are waiting till Saturday morning, and then they're going to remember that Jimbo Fisher was the character that John Goodman uh, mimicked in Revenge of the Nerds, who would look in the camera and go, "Shit, we forgot to practice." So that cool. is Jimbo Fisher, and I I know Bobby Petrino is a great play caller, and I know that Auburn hurting Texas a and M starting quarterback is going to end up helping them save their season. But if yeah. I get even money, and I got Nick Saban on this side, and I got Jimbo Fisher on this side, I don't give a damn which team Nick Saban is coaching. I'm putting my money on Nick Saban. So you like Alabama clearly? I like uh, and and let me get to like my uh, Alabama plus two and eat up some money line and get plus dollars. Yep, you will, you will be putting a little more muscle on it if uh, if we see more line movement. Um, well, I'm yeah. already on it at, at minus one. Uh, right, and a half. gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a pass for me right now. Um, I just – A&M's defense looks so doggone good. That Arkansas offense is not as bad as they made it look last yeah, but week. but their line is. Their line is, and Bama is going to be able to line it up and put five-star next to five-star lining up across the offensive and defensive lines. Yeah. I mean, and you were forgetting this. Jimbo Fisher still involved. This is true. Now – Let's also not forget this, though. Zach Calzada led A&M to a 41 38 win last time they met at this venue. Kyle Field is an 18 point underdog. And let's also. Jimbo had first and goal twice in the last four and a half minutes last year. Uh, the first time down by seven. And only after, only after they got like a false start to delay a game finally, finally he relented and did the field goal on like fourth and goal from like the twenty. Although he was gonna go for it at the ten and the fifteen, and but then they, I'll be damned if they didn't get a three and out, get the ball back, get down there again. But only three points in two first and goal scenarios in the last four minutes, or they coulda woulda won at Alabama last year so anyway all i'm saying is that i don't i just don't really like this one and i just place is going to be nuts and and we talked about this after we reviewed our our first episode last week of bets and ball games this in my opinion is the best sec game of the week for in-game players to catch what the vibe what the feel is i think the first quarter is going to be real telling here and you're going to have to be 
in tune with the line movement uh, because Vegas is – those guys are not dumb. FanDuel, DraftKings, BetMGM, all of the various sites, whichever one you most frequent, they're not dumb. They're going to keep an eye on all this too. But if you get a vibe early on and want to sit out maybe a pregame play, see how that first drive goes. Alabama goes three and out. Who knows? I mean, Petrino's a dude now. I wouldn't want him watching my kids, but that's no. how ball plays. <laughs> yes. I mean, he's as good an in-game ball play caller as I can recall. Yeah, um, there is no there's no doubt. Uh, it definitely don't like him as a human being, but I respect the mess out of his uh, coaching 100%. All right, that leaves us with just one SEC game uh, before we get – to our other picks and whatever other shenanigans we want to get to. Is Kentucky going to make Georgia fans get a little antsy uh, this weekend? Like I know they were at halftime against South Carolina uh, a few and weeks. And Auburn. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Georgia has not been that impressive uh, this year. So um, I don't like this game. At all. You feel like at some point we're going to get a get-right game for Georgia, but are we or are, are we not? And, and look, Kentucky's played Georgia pretty tough here lately. They haven't beaten them, uh, but they have covered a, a lot in this game recently. Um, certainly last year, I know it was a bad weather game, but they easily covered. In fact, they were 22.5-point dogs and only lost 16-6. Uh, to six. And then two years ago, Levis got a touchdown pass for a backdoor cover. It might have been on the very last play of the game. Yeah, um, I don't even kick the extra point. Right. Yeah, I was about to say that because it says 30 to 13. And, yeah, yes, exactly. They didn't kick the extra point. The uh, – it's it, it, we, it, I think we're all standing around waiting for the words you used were perfect. Georgia's get back game. I mean, get right game. And uh, if it just depends, I'm waiting for like Kirby Smart to use that $10 million a year salary to like give Mike Bobo and his wife a, a free vacation to Europe for the entire month of October. And that way the offense can get to know Brock Bowers again before the fourth quarter. And and, and don't get me wrong, I'm a smidge bitter because I'm an Auburn graduate who sucked it up and bet on Georgia because I thought that game was going to be 35-6. And it left us right there in that middle of the double painful Saturday night loss of your team lost, and they and, but they covered, and you were on the opponent. And maybe that's me. Maybe, I, maybe there's a special circle – in Dante's Inferno, down there where the only food you can eat is coleslaw, and it's served to you by barefooted clowns, that those people have to be the guys who bet against their team getting points, and you lose, but don't cover. And so I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's but, just me, but I just keep thinking about the barefoot clowns and why, why oh were they barefoot. Oh, my word. I hey. Hey, I, I'd run. I'd run from Chattanooga to Knoxville, butt naked, with Forrest Gump leading the way. Before I want to see a barefooted clown. I mean, <laughs> clowns suck. Can we just get that on the record? I mean, that that's awful. Uh, you're killing me today. I like it. Okay. Um. All right. I wanted to point out a stat. Kentucky uh, last twenty four as a road dog. Fourteen nine. And one against the spread. I got stuck on the barefoot clown. I forgot. Were, were you done with the Georgia Kentucky game? I forget. Hey, this this is called the back and forth. <laughs> right. This is the creative banter. That, I know. I mean, I thought you guys who do national radio shows like the Vision <laughs> Network and those things would be would be well aware of the well back and forth, the banter, well, if you will. Yes, but then yes. again, I'm a freckless, so <laughs> right. Well, I, uh, I just I, I forgot if the banter had. Uh, oh, I don't like this game either. Not okay, at all. Cool. all right, uh, yeah. 
if we're gonna if we're gonna use what is gonna be a familiar prism here on vets and ball games, what is the most logical play of each SEC game we discuss? This one has to be to me the under, because Mike Bobo and uh, that offensive staff, all Bobo jokes aside, Bobo by the way, a clown name. Coincidence? I don't think so. Uh, if all things – they do not want Carson Beck to beat them. Their defense is not going to – yes, Ray, Ray Hoos' britches ran for a billion yards against Florida. That's not going to happen Saturday in Athens. So, okay. Or, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just saying total 47 and a half or 48. Go ahead. Sorry. So, if this game finishes 28-17 or 28-17, 13, which would cover that that window is so tight that I think I, I think the smartest play, again, not suggesting it, but if this is a game and you're an a for entertainment player who is a Georgia fan, a Kentucky fan, this is a game you know you're gonna watch and you want to have a little taste on it. My best offer would be the under. All right, so and that's at 47 and a half or 48. Uh, for those of you thinking uh, Kentucky's going to remain undefeated, plus 455 on the money line uh, at Circa. And how about the fact that well, there's three unbeaten teams in the SEC and they are all in the SEC East. Okay, so let's get to our other picks outside of the SEC. I will start with Texas who was six and a half. Uh, oh, looks like it's uh, drifted down to six uh, here in the last hour or so. Even better. I would Total wait on that. I would wait. Uh, I've seen five and a half in a few places. Oh, or let me. Well, at least in Tennessee where we've got legalized betting, it's not maybe across all of the main metrics. Right, right, right. There are some, some uh, okay. offers that are five and a half. Interesting. I like Texas here. Now, look, I'll give credit to Oklahoma. I like Dylan Gabriel, 15 to 2 TDI and T ratio. I've always liked Dylan Gabriel. Oklahoma's 5 and 0, but straight up and against the spread. However, I think they've played cupcake competition, three of the wins over a group of five uh, teams. And, and, you know, I thought Cincinnati and, and SMU really hung around for the most part of fourth quarter. Of the fourth quarter, and we know Matt Campbell and Iowa State are, are way down uh, compared to two or three years ago, and, and those gambling suspensions have a little something to do with that. But they were already uh, – and by the way, I don't know what jobs he turned down two or three years ago, but he probably should have t- taken uh, one of them because his stock is uh, going down. But look, I just think Texas has played tougher competitions. They've won all five games by double-digit margins. Now, they're not 5-0 and ATS like Oklahoma, but they're two non-covers. They were laying 30 or more. They won 34-24 at Bama, albeit against a backup quarterback, but they went to Waco and beat Baylor 38-6. They beat OU 49-0 last year. I think Texas breaks open a close game late, early fourth, and wins by uh, two touchdowns. And then my other non-SEC game before I give Jay the floor on some other uh, picks – my other one is the semis and the Hokies. I'm going to go over. It was 52, 53 range uh, at last look. I, I would be fine with it at 53. Um, the Knowles <clears throat> combined scores this year have been 55, 60, 79, and 69. They're averaging 43.3 points uh, per game, but yet their defense is no good. Ranked 98th of 133 FBS teams, total defense, 118 versus the pass. The Hokies are no offensive juggernaut, but they're off their best offensive performance of the year, scoring 38. And maybe they're onto something with the new starter, Kyron Drones at QB. Uh, he's got a 4 to 1 TDI and T ratio, 205 rushing yards, and four rushing touchdowns. And he was three tutties, no picks against Pitt last week. So I am on that. Over, uh, what other not what non SEC games do you have going, Jay? All right, uh, the first one, and we talked about this, and it's kind of strange. It feels a little surreal that even with all the discussion going into the end of the season about the off season rule changes about clocks and 
and stopping the play and clock running and all those things, a lot of people would have thought it's going to greatly affect the over-unders. Well, I have had a whole lot of success on overs this year, and we, we mentioned his name earlier. I'm going to ride USC and Caleb Williams and Lincoln Riley until they buck me. And I know this line, this total has now gone 71 in most places, but Arizona can sling it. They're averaging 270 passing yards a game against FBS foes. They've got two future NFL wide receivers, and we saw what Colorado did with makeshift players on the perimeter. And Lincoln Riley ain't afraid to put 50 on you in the first half. No. And he almost so, did last week. Yes, he did. And Hey, qu- quick and, question, though. Or, no, you go ahead. No, that's all right. What? Was there any doubt in your mind if Colorado got that onside kick that they were going to go oh. score a touchdown yeah. and they were going to go for two? And I would have bet a lot of money they'd got the two-point conversion. And then I'd have bet a lot of money that Caleb Williams would have completed three throws <laughs> for uh, uh, many- 47 yards in 17 seconds and, and line up for a game-winning field goal. How much, how, much, how much time would you need? As long as you had 17 seconds, you're good? I'm going to need 18 because I'm going to need the 17 seconds to get down there, and then I'm going to need one more second to kick it. Okay, gotcha. Uh, my other one, Georgia Tech's defense may be the worst among all Power 5 conference teams. Georgia Tech gave up 38 unanswered to Bowling Green. Oh, I didn't know they were unanswered. They were unanswered? I, I thought they were unanswered. Oh, I, maybe they I, were. Maybe they were. Okay. Uh, Georgia Tech's now about to go to a Miami team that put 45 on a Texas A&M defense that we just spent a whole bunch of time talking about how good they are. The, the Miami is a top 10 offense facing a bottom 10 defense. 21 feels low, but the over under of 56 feels real low because Georgia Tech put 33 on Louisville. I mean, Georgia Tech has found some offensive success with some with some transfer portal kids, but they can't stop a soul. So my two non-SEC plays are USC Arizona over 71. And when I saw it this morning, I think it Miami, Georgia Tech was 56, 56 and a half. And we record this on Thursday. So uh take that for what it's worth. And I would only go over on either one of those. I haven't been able to get a side or total correct on Georgia Tech and Pittsburgh since the start of 2022. I don't know if that's 100% accurate, but I feel like every time I play a game involved with those two. So I will not be with you on there. Miami has had two weeks to prepare. I, I, I had Miami of Ohio for a loser against Miami in the opener, so I watched pretty much all that game. I watched bits and pieces uh, of the A&M game because I had like three games uh, in that time slot, I was also monitoring, but Miami looks pretty damn good to me. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. And I had them was- higher in my power rankings this week than most people. I think I had them 13. Um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, know this. Miami is fourth in the country against FBS opponents, averaging 6.4 yards a carry. Georgia Tech's bottom 15 in America against similar foes, allowing 5.5 yards a carry. Ooh. That I mean, that just is one of those things that you're talking about one team's amazing strength is going directly down the throat of another team's apparent weakness. So uh I mean, I I, I get it. I, I'm I'm not I'm not offering any more Auburn picks because I'm on my co- on my uh, email that I send out and in my picks column on Thursdays at timesfreepress.com, I am 18, 13, and three so far in the college football season. If you take Auburn out of the equation, my alma mater, I'm 18, 10, and three. So that's a nice big bagel and three on all Auburn picks so far this year. I, you know, I've been fading. You know, you talked me into Kentucky last week. Then I talked myself into Florida's team total under 22 and a half. I had Utah in week one. I've been doing good fading uh, the Gators, and I had the under was my big play in the Tennessee Florida. So I've been nailing 
Florida plays. Hopefully that continues uh, with Vandy this week. All right, uh, a little just housekeeping type, type stuff. And, and if you have an opinion on any of these, Jay, uh, let me know. Updated odds to win the SEC championship game. Georgia, minus 115. Bama, plus 270. A&M, plus 850. LSU, 10 to 1. Uh, Vols, 16 to 1. Ole Miss, 25 to 1. UK, 30 to 1. Mizzou, 46 to 1. Florida, 55 to 1. Auburn, 150. Arkansas, 400. Mississippi State, South Carolina, and Vandy are 500. Adjusted win totals. Bama, 9.5, minus 115 to the under, minus 110 to the over. That's at DraftKings. And Georgia, 11.5, under, minus 210, over, plus 165. And uh, just one other uh, point I did want to make, especially like for Bama fans who, um, you know, who will definitely think the sky is falling tomorrow night with another L. A&M has to play at Tennessee Next week, I'll give you the look-ahead line on that here in a minute after I make Jay guess the look-ahead lines, assuming he hasn't seen them. Tennessee will have two weeks to prepare for the Aggies, who will be in vintage letdown mode if they beat Bama. And then a and still got to go to at Ole Miss and at LSU. Um, so Bama would be essentially two games behind a and but a and might might lose two or three more SEC games. Now, the the team that's really rooting for somebody particular, and that, Ole Miss is two behind Bama. They need A&M to win. And so if A&M wins, this West is so wide open because LSU will still get – I mean, it'll be so wide open. All right, look at lines for the SEC in week seven. Let's make Jay take a stab at them. I'm assuming you haven't seen them. Nope. Okay. And then we'll know who Jay likes if the numbers are all right. AM at Vols. Vols two weeks to prepare. AM maybe a little beat up from a 60 minute battle. What say you? Pick them. Tennessee minus five. That's that's the exp- that's the how beat up does Bama leave you? Right. Corollary. That yep. that line will be closer to a field goal by kickoff. Yeah. And I and I think it also depends on well, A, you know, injuries and, and well, you know. Well, I mean, to that end, to injuries, uh, Tennessee lost their most physical wide receiver in the South Carolina game. Bruce oh, Bruce McCoy. McCoy. That's huge, yes. I mean, he, 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 that one's, that's one you don't want to watch again. Yeah. Oh, oh, I didn't, oh, good. I'm glad I didn't see the replay. Well, it was so another- bad. David Pascal here at the Times Free Press had a great quote from uh, Joe Milton that said, when they saw that injury, he didn't want to go back out on the field. It was that bad. Oh, wow. Yeah, there was one a few weeks ago that I didn't – I refused to look. I'm forgetting who it was. I'll tell you what. Since the Lat- since Lattimore, I, I, when, when I know ahead of time, it, if it's really bad, I, I don't look anymore because the Lattimore injury, I was literally sick to my stomach for uh, like two days. And what a likable kid who was a great, oh. great player and would have been oh. a bona fide Sunday Dude. Yes. 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 No question about it. All right. Um, Arkansas at Alabama. I mean, what a brutal stretch this is for Arkansas, by the way. It really is. Now. By, by the know. way. By the way. 16. It start at L- 18. At LSU, AM and Arlington, at Ole Miss, at Bam- They gotta get on an airplane four Fridays in a row. And then when they play Mississippi State at home, Mississippi State's got two weeks to prepare, but they get a favorable spot when they go at Florida and they'll win at Florida. Maybe Napier will get fired November 5th. We shall see. All right. Um, yeah, so you guessed 16. Pretty close there. Alabama, 18. Um, all right. Kentucky uh, is at home to Mizzou. Will this be a battle of undefeateds? I very much doubt it, but potentially. Well, how crazy could this be? If Kentucky plays Georgia tough and Missouri, which is that line swinging towards Missouri, if they find a way to win at home against LSU, could the CBS game be Missouri-Kentucky? It's not going to be Florida at South Carolina. 
It's no. not going to be Auburn and LSU. So, no, yes. Auburn LSU is at night. It, I mean, maybe it's Arkansas. No, I'm, and uh, they may have already announced it. Is, is Texas A&M Tennessee yet? Oh, uh, yeah. I would, I, that would be my guess, actually. Yeah, yeah. me too. Yeah. The, uh, Missouri going to Kentucky. Kentucky minus four. Three. Auburn at LSU. LSU minus nine and a half. 13 and a half. And here's the one. Florida at South Carolina. South Carolina, two weeks to prepare. Uh, South Carolina minus six and a half. Yeah, uh, that's probably what I would have said. South Carolina's minus one. There is no chance in hell we're going to be able to bet Sunday Sunday afternoon, Sunday night. No. With South Carolina minus one. And no, you know what? No at chance in hell. One, at minus one, quite possibly the bet of the year is let Florida blow Vandy out, and that that line stays there to even. I love South Carolina in that spot. Love South Carolina. They're better at quarterback. Oh. They are they are just as good in the back seven defensively. I mean. That's, yes. No, I think South Carolina beats Florida by double digits. And as much as, like, I didn't like – what you said just said only on account of me having Vandy plus 18 this week. Trust me, if Florida does blow out Vandy and we get lot, I will have a hell of a lot more on South Carolina minus three or less than I have on Vandy plus 18. So actually, that would work uh, for me. But for our listeners that are tailing me, if they're tailing me, we want Vandy plus 18. All right. Um, wrapping up here. All right. Plug away. Uh, five at 10. And uh, your newsletter. The 5 at 10 at timesfreepress.com uh, hits the interwebs every Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. It's five things I'm thinking about. Uh, it's got a whole lot of gambling in there. It's got a whole lot of sports and social commentary, at least three movie quotes almost on a daily basis. Um, my email newsletter called Jay's Plays. You can sign up through there or on the main site. Uh not to not to be as humble brag as our, our national radio syndicated uh, personality, <laughs> Mr. Brian Edwards, but uh, we're almost to a year of Jay's plays. And if you had done every one of my plays, I'm almost to up 100 units. Well, that means you had, you've had a good week since la- last week because it was what, I went 80? Five ago last night, had uh, Brewers, Arizona under. Uh, three and a half in the first five. Phillies minus uh, a half in the first five, and minus one and a half at plus one forty. Uh, had Jack Rich Rod, State, Rich Rod, State plus three, and New Mexico State minus six and a half. I turned on Jack State. They're down twenty three seven early third quarter. I was like, really? I go look at the live line. It was plus fifteen and a half. Got in there on that. Money line was plus seven twenty, and right as I go, I was just going to throw like twenty bucks on the money line plus seven twenty just for giggles. Right as I went to do the the plus seven twenty, like a play happened and it went off the board, and I'll oh, be yeah, damned. Because, I mean, ten minutes turned, later, they're winning. It turned Dang. into a track meet in the third quarter. I mean, Man. Jacksonville State turned it. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I I would be happy if the Falcons drafted players from Jacksonville State. I do not want my CPA to come from there, but I'm happy for all of – I mean, they got dudes running up and down the field. They t- threw the speed on that D-lineman. I thought, the D-lineman. The, I thought he was going to – the pick six, and then the white boy comes and catches him. I couldn't believe – that That D-lineman was moving. And Hey, uh, hey, 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 be careful now. My, you don't want my wife to call you a freckles. Okay, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. So, um, last thing from me, um, I like the Bears Commanders over uh, 44 and a half tonight. The overs 4 0 for the Bears. Combined scores 59, 51, 44, and 58. Washington's defense has given up 34, 37, 33 the last three. And before the two turnovers of the fourth quarter, Fields was playing the game of his life last week. He did have four touchdown passes. If we're going to, if we're going to add Thursday night picks, I hope this is up in time. Liberty is going to baptize Sam Houston State. Liberty Liberty. is top five offensive in almost every metric. Sam Houston State is winless. 
and one of the three worst defenses against FBS foes as they make the transition to the FBS. Liberty, because they they hired the dude that was at Coastal Carolina to replace yes. Freeze. Uh, they Chad got well. the Caden Salter kid. The oh from Lib yeah oh yeah yeah the backup QB that got or hurt a little bit last yeah, year. yeah, 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 as, yeah, as, yeah. as now they're QB one and they're running the spread and they're putting up more than five hundred yards offense. Liberty crucifies Sam Houston State tonight. And Liberty's undefeated ATS. Uh, hey, a quick side question. Would you rather punch the Liberty, Liberty, Liberty dude that, that comes on the commercial with the with the emu, or would you rather punch Jamie from the Progressive Insurance commercials? Arthur Smith. Uh, okay, there you go. <laughs> winner, winner. Tell everybody where they can find us, Brian. All right. Uh, uh, vets and ball games, Greason and Edwards, number two. We are wrapping up. Please uh, go to Southeastern 14, hit subscribe, all that. If you want to tell a friend, we appreciate it. And uh, that's it for Jay Greason. I'm Brian Edwards. We will talk to you next Thursday. Best of luck with your bets and ball games. We're out.